G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the east side of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire in the blue. It's give you anxiety. And on the west side of the map, playing in the color red as the Chinese representing the Istanbul Wildcats. It's Casper. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dry Arabia. We're here watching some Golden League 2, part of EGC TV's third round in this event. I'm excited. I'm excited because we've got a classic matchup. I say this as a as an ex-Chinese main. You guys will remember the good old days back where I used to play the Chinese. Not anymore. Long gone are those days. I'm now a, an English man myself, actually. Uh, but uh, I still have a soft spot in my heart for the Chinese. And I'm curious to see exactly how Casper is going to be looking to play this matchup. I'm always looking to learn. And this is probably the hardest matchup that I think there is for the Chinese. At the very least, the, the Chinese... I think it might be the closest to one of the hardest matchups in the game just because the timings that the HRE have are just so damn amazing uh, compared to what the what the Chinese have got. They just seem to pip them at the post every single damn time. Now, before we move any further on in this game, I will let you know if you'd like to check out some coaching content, you can find that over on Patreon. There's plenty of good stuff over there for you to have. And of course, if you're interested in seeing more casted games or just checking out some live action, over on EGC TV. I'll leave a link in the description where you can check that out as well because these players and many more are going to be playing in Golden League 2. It's close to wrapping up though. You can find it at uh, 15 GMT, 10 AM Eastern on Saturdays and Sundays. Only for a couple more weeks left though, so make sure you tune into it. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. We mentioned earlier about the fact that it was favoured uh, for the Holy Roman Empire. Why exactly is that, Tronco? Why exactly is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons why it is. But essentially, it boils down to this. The Chinese want to make a lot of villages. They need to make a lot of villages. Now, there's a, a, a window open in the early game that the Holy Roman Empire are going to be able to exploit and say, well, you're, while you're making villages, what I'm going to be doing is aging up to the Castle Age. And by the time I age up to the Castle Age, you're going to be you know, making your villages and you're going to be trying to catch up to the castle age, but I'm going to get there and I'm going to pick up my relics. And from there, once I've got my relics, I'm going to use those. And there's multiple ways that you can use them, but you will find the better Holy Roman Empire players we will typically look to go to Imperial Age. I say the better, but I guess it really comes down to preference. We do see a lot of Holy Roman Empire players look to play it out in, in the uh, castle age. And there's two styles that you can play. Obviously, we can see the 2TC style, which is what GUA is going to be looking to play here. We can tell by the fact he's got the stone immediately next to his Arkham Chapel. And a beautiful little spot here on the main wood line. Obviously, when we take a look at uh, where his other options were, I mean, there's not really much here that, uh, that makes you happy, does it? This is pretty much the only option for his landmark. So it makes sense. And this kind of forces him into a second TC style here for the Holy Roman Empire. And as a result, I suspect he's probably going to be looking to play a little bit more castle orientated. So that could mean maybe playing into the Burgrave and looking to build up a really big mass of units. Could mean an extended Feudal Age as well. Uh, but probably going to be avoiding playing Imperial just simply because he will have lots of villages left over from the Second, from the Third Age. And that that uh, that Palace of Swabi is not going to be as impactful as if he were to get it at, say, the 12-minute mark or the 13-minute mark. Uh, because when he gets it eventually, even if it's like 18, 19 minutes, the second town center is going to mean he's got so many more villagers, so a lot less impact. So Casper's definitely going to have a tough task ahead of him. I'm curious to see how he looks to tackle it. There's ways that you can try and mitigate the effects of what the Holy Roman Empire want to do. I remember back in the day, there was a classic build order that you could do with the Chinese. Essentially what you'd do is you'd wall off your base and you'd make three town centers. <laughs> you'd go for Song Dynasty and you would boom like crazy. You'd let your enemy take the sacred sites, you'd let them take the relics and you'd meet them in the Imperial Age and you would beat them there because you'd have so many more villages than what they would have. But that's not possible on a map that's open like this. On a map that is open like Dry Arabia, you're just going to get split apart by the inevitable knights that come knocking on your doors. Take a look at this though. Take a look at this though. Oh my lord. Okay, I was, go I was gonna say, where are we going with this Barbican? But it looks like we're just gonna be dropping it on the deer hunt. So what do, you, what do you reckon the chances are of GUA splitting this hunt? Yeah, they're pretty high. Really well played here by GUA, doing the right thing. So spotting out the fact that his enemy is gonna be... He, he doesn't actually do it, but it, what you wanna do is when you see your enemy go for a hunt like this. So he's, he's looking to drop the Barbican on the hunt. He wants to secure it. He wants to maximize the efficiency here. So what GUA can do is come in, split all the deer up, 
and then kill them. And then that way they're really far away, so he gets less efficiency on these. But because he leaves them alive, it's going to mean that Casper can just drop the mill down here, make sure that everything's nice and close. And he can even use the scout to push these back in. But we do see the second TC coming up for GUA. Very quick TC. Take a look at this. 5 minutes 20. It's already halfway through. On top of that, this is a pretty far out TC. I mean, it's still pretty close. There's no real threat of this going down because of emergency rep repairs. Um, but uh, it's this is a this is a really nice uh, position. Look at GUA just pushing around his own deer here. Just to make sure that they all stay close to that town center. You really want to be careful about where you leave those... Uh, Oh my lord. Where well, you leave those deer carcasses. What have we got going on here? Casper. Just playing a cat. This is this is a Casvesque. A calf I want to say a calf kesk. I want to say a calf style, but obviously it's uh, that's a different type of style. This is a Casper esque type of style. Where you just be running around the map with villagers. Just looking to drop down some outposts prevent your enemy from gathering gold obviously when we see GUA's gold position two gold down here another gold over on this side it looks pretty easy to actually shut down it's gonna make it tough for him but I'm curious to see how Cap <laughs> I can't do it anymore how Casper goes about this little attack and exactly what he's got in store does he look for something I mean the, we know that the Arkham Chapel's here and there's there's inevitably going to be farms that get placed down but I can't help but feel like gold is the the primary target or at least it should be now GUA could going to be moving out across the map. Keep in mind, he's got that second town center. It's going to mean he's able to catch up to Casper. We'll check in with Casper as he begins. <laughs> I'm reminded of that Beastie Cutie video. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's the one where he's watching a guy playing and the guy's got an Imperial official supervising a mining camp and there's one villager on it. And he's like, ooh, 12 gold. Wow. <laughs> it reminds me of that. It's like... Bro, you've got three vills on that mining camp. <laughs> this ain't it, Chief. This ain't it. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, he, at this point in the game, he's got enough Imperial officials that, it, you know, he, he can afford to do this, right? Like, this is this is the best it gets uh, with, with his case at the moment. But we do indeed see outposts coming up on the Arkan. So probably GUA would be thinking, All right, he's got vills on stone. He's looking for that second town center. Now he's like, hmm, that's a lot of vills, and they're all making outposts. Hmm, all right. Things are about to get interesting. And look at GUA actually putting a, 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 a I say a defensive outpost. It's, it's kind of defensive. I mean, it, it's stopping his enemy from pushing in through this position. But uh, I'm curious to see how this goes, because GUA is going to lose complete access to his Arkham Chapel now. And now we have that horseman coming through. Expect to see more and more outposts beginning to come down, drop down around the map. Beautiful play here from GUA as he tries his best to force back those villagers slowly but steadily. At the same time, bit of a counter-attack. Not a counter-attack, rather just a scout coming in and Spear's going to be coming through here for Casper. Casper just doing what he loves to do. For anybody who doesn't know, Casper, he is infamous for his outposts. He's, he loves outposts. He loves going crazy, doing silly things like this. Basically, you know, if you've ever done connect the dots, Casper's the guy that paints the dots on everything, okay? And he just likes to connect them through his enemy's base. You can see right here, you can, he's got a little backward C going down. In fact, you could probably even paint it into a U right there. Yeah, there you go. You, you in trouble. Give you anxiety? How about give you towers? That's exactly what Casper does here. Supervising that barracks. We're going to pump out some spears early on. We can see Morville's going to be moving out here. GUA is in trouble, I'm telling you right now. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these vills. I mean, GUA thinks he's got this under wraps, so he doesn't know rea the reality. The hardened spearmen are on the way, and let me tell you now, they are hard. They are hard for some horsemen. Here we go. Watch out. Boom. In the face. Boom. In the face again. And now, Casper, he's putting on the pressure, because GUA is trying to get Castle, right? And GUA knows that if he if he does not survive this early onslaught, that's, that's all. That's, that's it, mate. It's all over. It's all over. But look at this. So greedy from GUA. He's like, actually, I think we're going to be fine just going to Regnets here. I'm not too worried about this. We can go Burgrave. We can siege it down. But then we're kind of cutting ourselves off. You know, like we're hurting ourselves. We're not really, you know, it's, it's not really that impactful. And this is where I was like kind of pointing out earlier that I felt like this was a, a, a really important thing to lock down. It can be hard though. You go for an outpost that's so disconnected. You can see right here, like he, he's not going to be able to connect the dots just with these two outposts. So villagers can siege it down. So maybe that's where it becomes important to even look for something like the fortification. That way you have the guarantee that 
this outpost, the integrity, will be okay. Double arrow slits now coming through for these outposts. Keep in mind, he did have a second outpost on the backside here. He has cancelled it for the moment. But more outposts are going up. Oh, there are outposts every... Oh my lord, GUA is getting outposted out the wazoo. But this is what I was talking about. This is part of the reason why I think you, you probably want to go for a fortification on an outpost like this if you're not going to connect those dots. Just simply because the vills get pulled and you, you can't do anything about it. E even if the outpost is up with arrow slits in or with, with the... Um, with, with the hand cannon slits, it's just not going to matter. All right, Casper trying his best. GUA now in the Castle Age. We'll ride on board with Gua. You know, in Age of Empires 3, we used to call him Gua the Goat. GUA, Gua, and the Goat, because he was the greatest that we had. All right, looking to pick up some relics. He's heading, the, taking this Prelate back. I'm curious to see what, what's he going to be able to achieve here as we have a classic matchup, the Prelate versus the hand cannon slip. And it seems like the prelate is not doing too well. He's trying to sneak it back through. I don't reckon he, I don't like his chances though. Another, oh my, oh my God. He's literally getting outposted everywhere. GUA. Oh, you know, we often talk about give you anxiety, giving other people anxiety, but I, I have no doubt in my mind right now. GUA is feeling anxiety. This is, this is a tough game for him. And look at him having to take the, the gold in the center. The only gold that hasn't been outposted by Casper. Casper has outposted all the things. If you know that meme, all the things. That's that's a 2007 meme. All the things. That's a that's a classic one. You know that that, that one will go down with some of the best memes there are. But I tell you what, Casper not paying attention in the center here. Knight going to be helping out, stopping that early aggression. Not early aggression, but stopping that continued push, that continued aggression. And look at this. GUA having to move away from those initial starting locations. The Arkham Chapel completely nullified in this game. You're not going to see any action around it. Slowly but steadily. GUA. This is what we were talking about. This is what, when you don't connect the dots the same way Casper's done here, then you leave yourself exposed to this. And we, we do actually see the, the fortification coming through. This is exactly what he needs. Is he picking off villagers here? Phil also coming into repair. Looks like he's focusing down on the horsemen. The spears are going to be what turn the tide. And the fortification, once it comes through, it's going to give him a beautiful little boost. Uh, to the uh, the prospects of that outpost. And indeed, it does stay up. And now G GUA, <laughs> he's in trouble. He's he's really in trouble. I mean, the only place that he's got that's safe is in the middle of the map, which is the part that Casper is yet to wall. If we take a look from the perspective of Casper, he has walled, or rather, he has towered everything. There is a tower in every single location of GUA's base. I mean, with the exception of right here, everything's covered. Is he, he's not actually able to hit this. And he can't get an outpost through here. There's no sprinkled emplacement yet in the middle. Siege Workshop going to be coming down. Does he go into Battering Rams here? I feel like Battering Rams are the, are the play instead of Trebs. Because you can just shift click them around the map. You, 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 like Battering Ram, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. And you're fine, right? Like you don't have to worry. You don't even have to think about it. You'll just uncut or you just like recover that those segments of land eventually. At the moment, Vils on both sides going down. And this is what I was talking about with recovering the gold. Like, it's so easy just to recover the gold here uh, for GUA. He just commits a couple of villages. And yeah, sure, he lost, what, two vills, three vills? And it sucks, but he regains his gold. That, and that, that's the big focus. The thing to note is that he needs to get an outpost down right here. Otherwise, he will just lose it again. Now those spears are going to be coming in. GUA not paying attention. Obviously, under attacking multiple different angles. If we ride on board with him at the moment... He's under attack in three different locations. Remember that when you get attacked by an outpost, it gives you that alarm as well. So GUA's, right now in GUA's headset, there is just alerts going off everywhere. North of the map, Prelate. Gonna be looking to try and pick up one of these relics. No, actually gonna be heading to the sacred site instead. Speaking of relics, how many relics are we sitting on at the moment? It looks like just the one relic. One relic so far, and it's gonna be a manganel coming out from for GUA. I wonder what he's looking to do with this. I haven't seen a whole bunch of archers coming out from Casper just yet. And keep in mind, he still is in the feudal age here. So it's going to be really... Oh, oh, he's got after the villagers. He's going after the vills. Looks like the outpost is going to get up. Pops the vills inside. They'll be safe for now. The men at arms are going to be coming to join the party. But you can see that Manganel able to do quite a bit of damage here. Despite the fact it's just a Manganel. I say just a Manganel like it's... Like it's a... It's, it's a fledging Manganel. No, it's... it's like that, that, That's a lot of damage. All right. Arkham Chapel. Not really going to be useful here. Instead, going to opt for farms around the town center. And we hear... We hear an outpost that, that gets... I don't know whether it was cancelled or whether it was burned down. 
But look at those worker kills. Starting to really build now. Casper. He's taken out 16 workers so far. Remember, GUA is on 2TC, so he can afford to lose a few more villagers. But Casper slowly and steadily coming up the rear. We're right on board with him as he looks to add in a second town center down here on the south side. Bit of a weird town center spot. I'll give him that. Not, not the... Not the most sensible of town center locations here, but uh, maybe maybe he'll uh, maybe maybe he'll fix it up. We'll have to wait and see. Now remember, Casper's going to be able to take off like a rocket once he gets that second town center down. The main thing you've got to worry about is a push coming out from GUA, I think, because you feel like you've bought yourself a lot of space. There's the battering ram. You feel like you bought a lot a lot of space here. The outposts are buying time. So now you can go for a second TC, maybe even a third TC. Or is he just putting the TC down here to cover the... I think that's probably it. He'll put a mill down, get an Imperial official out here as well, just so he can cover that. Probably going to be the case. Maganel just continuing to roam around. That battering ram working down the outposts. Riding on board with GUA. There are so many attack alarms going off right now. This is just, this is kind of ludicrous, right? But I think it shines a light on a number of things. Like number one, it shines a light on, and, and I think this is why I was kind of like pointing to the fact that when you when you go for a, uh, a town center like this, putting it on the uh, on the deer can always really pay off. Because now, I mean, GUA could have just camped this deer, right? Like he comes in, comes out, comes in, comes out. Looking for a mill down here. I don't like his odds. We'll have to ride on board with Casper a little bit longer and see how he goes as spears get pulled in the middle but yeah one, one of the things i would love to see from casper which we've seen it from people like uh crackety i remember when crackety used to spam the chinese he would just say okay i'm, I'm just gonna make three tcs behind this in fact i, I remember some games where he, i think he would even go like four tc song dynasty which back then was like six towns on us it's just it's, it's ludicrous the amount of resources you need just to put into villages with that many with that many uh tcs but look at this beautiful counterplay here by casper and I think this is it, right? Like, I was talking earlier about this matchup. I said, to win this matchup, like, it, it, it's not to win the matchup, it's it's hard. It's next to impossible. It, for even evenly skilled players who understand the matchup. And I feel like you really do have to play, you have to play very well, or you have to play outside the box. And I think Casper's recognized that, and he says, you know what, I'm going to play to my strengths here. GUA, he's going to get towered in the face. And that's exactly what happened. So, I mean, at this point, Casper's got complete coverage of GUA's base. Like if we if we take a look right now, oh, there's a nice nice little proxy up here. But if, if you take a look at the line of sight on that base, he's got complete line of sight. I'm just showing, I'm highlighting the mini map for you guys, by the way. Just th th that's the reason why we're up here. So, it, so you can see the mini map in, it, in its entirety. But he's got complete line of sight. There are no surprises that are going to be coming in for him. He's able to keep track of everything. But slowly he is losing position. It definitely feels that way. Where did the battering ram go? And... Uh, oh, he brought it to the front. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So he's brought it to the front. 24 spears coming through. Let's shift that over. We're 18 minutes through this game. GUA looking to pick up his only his second relic at this point in the game. I wonder had Casper gone for a more aggressive Barbican, whether the outcome would be different. Because... Perhaps this Barbican could have just come down right here in the center. This has really been a, a, a stronghold for GUA. But I, I, I think if anything, this game highlights, does the tower, is the tower still kind of broken when, when you see this? It's, maybe it's not the tower. Maybe it's like the Chinese build speed. Chinese build speed still seems really crazy good. Like how long is an outpost meant to take? It's meant to take a minute and 20 seconds. And I, that, watching that go up, it felt like about seven seconds. So I don't know what numbers are going on right there, but if, if, you, if you're playing China, make sure you're utilizing the build speed on outposts. That's pretty crazy. Men at arm numbers starting to build here. Four give you anxiety. We're going to pick up upgrades as well. We see two-handed axes coming in. Two-handed weapons, rather. I mean, I think they are still technically axes, though. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, that's an axe. Good good work, Drongo. That's an axe, all right. Well done. You called it. Two-handed axe. I'll, I, I will accept that. Age up now coming through. It's going to be the Imperial Palace. Let's look to see where he's dropping it down, though. I don't actually see it on the map. Oh, it's just going to be in the base. He, he just puts it down right here. Bit of a weird spot to go for the Imperial Palace. I would have thought, like, somewhere out here. Look to try and get a bit more line of sight down on this spot. And he's just guarding up these, uh, these relics for the moment. There's still two relics here on the backside that are not taken. 
And those men at arms together with the knights moving out across the map. Men at arms just absolutely everywhere at the moment for GUA. He's doing the right thing. Let's ride on board with him and see the attacks. Oh my lord, look at the... <laughs> look at the attacks on the minimap. But GUA just really doing his best to hold on. And I think Casper playing such a smart thing as well because Casper knows that the Holy Roman Empire don't get access to the archery range until Imperial Age. And so he's exploiting that by making spearmen. So there's no real way that he can... It's a joke, guys. It's a joke. Obviously, they get access in the feudal age. The point is that I, I'm trying to make is that Holy Roman Empire players don't like to make archery ranges. They, they're just like, you know what? We'll just deal with melee. With melee units, that'll be fine. Just go full melee. We'll be okay. And so Casper's just like, well, I'll just make a unit that I know you're not going to build the counter to. But fortunately, the men at arms still do pretty well against the spearmen. So your GUA looking to gather control of the map. One thing to note is that Casper hasn't gone for any walls on the defensive. So it kind of leaves his base open. He's got really good line of sight though. Obviously can see everything and anything that the enemy throws out at him all at once. I want to throw that reference in there. And still spearmen and crossbows now going to be coming out for him. 87 villages apiece at this point. Keep in mind GUA with three relics in the bag. One relic just picked up. Let's take a look and see if we can track that relic as it comes through. I don't actually know where it... Oh, jeez. He's on, he's on a mission to move this guy, that's for sure. Didn't expect that, that, that to happen. And now GUA going to be looking to drop some walls down as he slowly cleans up these outposts. This is what we were talking about. This is You just shift-click this battering ram around the countryside and it'll make its way. Look at this. Yet to go over onto this one, but... Casper doing the right thing and picking up fortification on all of these, on all of these outposts. So they do survive a little bit longer. The classic Mangonel just roaming around the map here. This is what you love to see. Ah, oh, poor Randy. He was a young man, but he was a foolish man. And he came to the wrong neighborhood today by himself. He forgot his own boys. He forgot to bring the top rope with him. And, uh, and Casper deciding that there's not enough stone on his side of the map, so he's going to look to try and steal GUA stone. This is act I, I do actually like this play. So basically, this is saying I'm going to drop down a forward keep, but I don't have the resources to do it right now. So I'm just going to instead put a mining camp down and gather them on your front door, and there's nothing you can do about it. Except he market trades. He market trades. He bought the resources. And look at this. The keep going to be coming down. Beautiful spot. This is such a great keep position. The reason why this is so good is because with the Chinese keep... It's able to almost one-shot knights. I think you need two shots to one-shot a knight. Two shots to one-shot a knight. You need two shots to kill a knight. Let's go with that one. That's probably That makes a little bit more sense. Uh, two shot, shots from a Chinese keep to kill a knight. Horseman, I think it's going to be the same, actually. But essentially, this shuts down all the production that's right here. And this is part of the reason why this keep is so powerful. You'll see as soon as this horseman comes out, he's going to get shot in the face with a keep straight down to 14 health. And, uh, and as a result, it means that all of these stables cannot be used. So really smart move there by Casper. When you drop a keep down on top of production like that, it really just forces your enemy to play a certain way. All right, now GUA holding on. Look at the difference in scores here as well. Less, <laughs> less than 20 points, the difference between these two. Spearman now going to be coming out as well from GUA. So going to be moving into a bit of a, a more... Or a less armored composition, let's just say that much, because he was men at arm knight previously. At the same time, attack still happening across the map. And it looks like a second keep going to be thrown down. Where does he go for the second keep? Doesn't really have a, a decent spot inside the base, unless... Nah, you can't fit it there. <laughs> he puts it next to the ne next to the second one. Well, next to the first one. Manganel coming in. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Randy Orton looking to set up. In off the top rope, it's big. It's big. He hits the first shot. Keep in mind, he's got textiles here. Manganel to the face. Randy Orton, absolutely huge. Second shot comes through. Casper not really paying attention. Losing a lot of units here. Keep gets cancelled. GUA says, not in my base. You get out of here. Four relics in the bag for him as well as the defense is solid. The keep is rejected. Casper heads back towards his keep and says, mm, we'll, we'll try this again. But next time we'll bring... Um, I, we'll, 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 I don't know what we'll bring, but we, we, we will try it. We will try it again. I can tell you that much. If there's one thing I know about Casper, he, he, there, there, this is, yep. I, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I just didn't know where. 
It's Casper, and he's coming back again with another keep. Just when you thought outpost spam was toxic, Casper's like, actually, it's keep spam that's toxic. The outpost spam, it's just like the warming up stage, right? Like, you, you've been to a basketball game before. You've seen the guys jumping around, shooting a couple three-pointers before the game begins. That was the outposts. This right here, this is the main event, baby. This is the main event. Casper looking to secure this game out with just keeps and boiling oil going to be coming through. Not a lot of units here to defend this. Double battering ram looking to siege this down. And Bill's going to be jumping out instead of sieging down the, the battering rams, which he could have done there. Actually, did he reposition? He might have repositioned the villagers onto a resource in this direction. Maybe the goal potentially. Indeed, he did. He repositioned the villagers. He's going to look to siege. First one, first battering ram down. Under pressure, but the Manganok shot comes through. You hear him off the top rope. Fortunately, he rolled out of the way at the last second. Keep now going to be burned down slowly but steadily. Instead, going to be looking to repair up that keep. Makes a lot of sense. Crossbows and Jukunu on the back. Sieging down a stable because, well, that's what they're good at doing, I guess. But at the same time, towards the north side, Casper throwing away a couple villagers. Attacks all over this map right now. Oh, the timing from that was impeccable. GUA just missing the kill on eight villagers. Casper doing a marvelous job of keeping those villagers alive, and they managed to make it out there. Many of whom are on just a slither of health, two health. And the cleanup comes through. And Casper still somehow holds on in this game. Take a look at this. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I'm not sure if you realize. <laughs> sir, this is an Arby's. <laughs> look at this. Where do these villas think they're going? Manganel shot! It's big, it hits the front. Second Manganel shot. They're running the gauntlet right now, these villagers. The keep must get up, and Casper puts it up. This game is ludicrous. You know what's wild to me? Is that Casper is actually looking like he might win this game. Who needs? I mean, two town centers? Yeah, so what? Who Like, four relics? Go for it, bro. I'll throw down a keep. I'll throw down two keeps. I'll throw down 12 keeps. Let's do it. And GUA gonna throw down a defensive keep. And Casper's like, actually, that's probably too many vills. I don't think I can outspeed that. Um, I'm going to siege down your outpost instead. And then we'll call it even. So outpost goes down. Or at least we'll be going down. And now Casper, instead of rallying villagers into the enemy base, decides to rally some spears into the enemy base. Has lost all the keeps. Looks to take the hunt on the south side. Begins moving away. Jeez, he's just so mobile, isn't he, Casper? I, I feel like at any point he could strike with a thousand villagers building keeps, outposts. Look at this, just such re really nice versatility on, on this. You know, they, I guess they call it base defense, right? Like, the defensive, defensive building. Defensive building. This is not a defensive building, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you right now. At least not the way that, that Casper uses it. Can I say what the, is the description for outpost also the same? <laughs> Oh, Relic. Oh, Relic. Who Who is writing your building descriptions? Town, town Center. For anybody who doesn't know, this is a military building. Uh, and these are beautiful economic buildings here. Defensive building. Yes. Exactly what they... Exactly what it should be called. These villas here. They, these are the next candidate. These are surely the next candidate to come in. There's a wide open space at the bottom here. Looking to be exploited. Villas now. On that stone mine. Under pressure. So many battering rams here. GUA doing a wonderful job with the rams as well. Where did these vills end up going? Where did, the, where did those vills end up going? All right, there they are. I don't know why I couldn't see them. Another battering ram. He's actually going to be able to take down the town center here. Vill count. He's down 20 at the moment. Units running back, on, or back through. And GUA now. Building up the rams still. He's always been a fan of the ranch. Never been too keen to get into the showers himself, but here today, we see the GUA. Oh my... Did, did, it, did it just kill... Oh my... Look, look at the damage it does to Manganels. Oh my... I can't believe how much damage that was. Within three seconds, that Manganel was gone. Now defensive keeps. You know when you're forcing defensive keeps out from Casper? You're doing something right. This is not what Casper wants. And, th and this is the game Casper doesn't want. Casper doesn't want to play a game like this. If Casper plays a game like this, he loses. The games that Casper wins are the games where he puts his enemies off balance, puts them on their toes. That's the game that Casper wins. I'm not saying Casper can't win macro games, but I mean, at, at this point, it, it's this matchup that you really don't want a macro game in. The, the tempo from the Holy Roman Empire, it's just too great. 
And now we can see that village account climbing GUA just says, you know what? I don't need Imperial Age. I'll stick it out in the Castle Age. Battering Rams continuing to push forward. GUA slowly recovering the map piece by piece. 30 minutes into this game. 25 minutes since he lost his since he lost his first piece of it. But slowly he moves across the map. Looking to find any enemy units that he can shut down. And at this point, it's become clear that GUA seems to be in the driver's seat for this game. He managed to hold on. Relentless attack after relentless attack from his enemy. And he was able to keep his calm, keep a cool head, stay collected. And now he's able to really put that economy. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Look at the size of that economy. And that's not the first time somebody said that about GUA. I can tell you firsthand. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> I, you, you, I could look at that all day. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I'm, I shouldn't. All right, GUA starting to push forward. Keep going to be going down here. GUA looking to secure up the sacred site in the center. Solidify his position here. Could be using this as a potential attacking platform. Battering Rams making their way through. A lot of Vils getting pulled here. Looks like he's got that extra movement speed for the Rams. They're going to be going extra quick. Now the Horsemen going to be looking to clean this position. Men at Arms also helping out. And Kasva down 20 military pop. Down 30 villager pop. To the north of the map, he's under attack. Main, on the main base, he's under pressure. Where are those Men at Arms? Manganel comes in. Nice shot. Really good combination, actually. Now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Knight Horseman together with Manganels, because the Knight Horseman can make the spears stop moving and you can't control them. The Manganel gets the shot off. That's actually really smart. Manganel just dishing out constant damage throughout this fight. And all three sacred sites now get taken. GUA's timer for victory has begun. More and more spears coming out. Horsemen together. And at this point, it looks almost certain like good game will get called imminently. GUA doing a beautiful job this game. I mean, realistically, you, ju you just got to take your hat off to him. I, I think so many other players would have tapped out against this. And now we see the Ellsmark Palace coming down. GUA says, have a taste of your own medicine. Oh, how does it taste, boy? Get it in there nice and deep like Ellsmark Palace going up with 30 villagers. And good game gets called. Casper's not going to give him the pleasure of doing what he did all game to GUA. Well played to GUA, fellas. Go check out EGC TV. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can watch it live. 15 GMT, 10 AM Eastern, Saturdays and Sundays. Be there or be square.